How, how much of an impact did that 17 win in South Bend have as far as establishing where George is today? Well, you know, it, it just showed everyone started buying into the program, and we saw what we can do if we buy in and all work together and all work for a common goal. And it showed like it was a new era. It was Kirby Smart's era. What, did, what do you remember about Jake in that game? That was his first career start. What do you remember about that week leading up and the fact that here you were having to start this true freshman in South Bend for the very first? Yeah, you know, I, I really don't remember leading up much of Jake. I was really, I was a new myself for that, you know, being in South Bend, always heard about Notre Dame. But he was very calm and very poised like he always was, and I think he's gotten better and he's improved a lot. You know, the fans are pumped about this game. What are, I mean, does Notre Dame do something for you guys, too, or is it just, you know, I mean, they're obviously a good program, but do y'all reflect at all on kind of their historical... Uh, not, not really, you know, it's, we know it's a big game, you know, fans really love it, you know, they've been talking about it all year, you know, we're excited, you know, I'm excited to see what the fans are going to do, see who shows up, you know, I think they're going to rock the house. Do you remember what that win did for you guys two years ago? Put us at, like, high up in the rings, I think, and that was one of the wins that projected us and made us go in the playoffs. What do you say about Rodrigo and I mean, uh, how much confidence you have in him? What do you remember when he kind of made that announcement in, you know, at Notre Dame a couple of years ago that he was on scholarship? Oh man, just with the win and then seeing Rod be on scholarship, it was all just joy and really excited. One of the happiest moments I was in my life. Sure, how are you personally different from two years ago when you played at Notre Dame? What are you better at? What do you need to work on? Uh, I'm a lot more knowledgeable about the game. You know, when I was first playing, I was new to the system. You know, there's some mistakes that I made that I look back now and like, wow, I can't believe I made those mistakes. And what I need to work on is just getting my guys going, you know, getting these guys ready and getting their mindsets ready for this game. Now that you are a senior, you do have a lot of young you know, stud recruits out there. The Lewis scene rings out from last week. And sounds like you like kind of getting guys coached up. How have you taken on that role this year as a senior? Well, you know, Coach Smart told me, you know, I, I got to do that, and that's part of my role. And I like it. You know, I love seeing these guys develop. It's something that, you know, Dom Sanders, Malcolm Parrish, Aaron Davis did when I was young and when I was first started playing. So I want to do the same thing in soon from two, three years, watch the guys be in my shoes. I think they installed uh, new lights in the stadium. Uh, I don't know if you all noticed or whatever, but I think it's with this game in mind, you know, to enhance the atmosphere. What can you say about the nighttime atmosphere in San Francisco? I guess that fourth quarter tradition is yeah. over the lights, somebody will hold up their lights. And I guess, you know, when they did that at Notre Dame, the fans held up the phone a couple years ago. What was all that like? You know, I think that's when the tradition started, so I, I really like it. It's pretty cool, you know, it, when you get it on pictures and when you're out there on the field to see that, it, it's, it's really nice, you know. I like that. It reminds me that, you know, I'm at Sanford. This is where it started. This is who does it, you know, my fans. As far as energy itself, does that really add an extra charge to you guys at the beginning of the world? Tradition? Uh, yeah, I mean, it brings energy. I just, it just looks nice to me, honestly. You know, most of the time I see it and then I'm worried about what we got to do next. JR, you played in that 2017 Notre Dame game. It was one of your first games. You know, actually playing, like, what, what do you think that game did to elevate this program to the level it's at today? Like I said before, you know, it just showed everyone that it's a new era and it showed everyone when we buy in to a program, you know, Coach Smart and Coach Smart's way, we can be very good. We can be the best team that we want to be. And from the year before, not everyone was bought in. You know, we, we hit some bumps in the road. But once we buy in, we, you know, the sky's the limit. You say not everyone was bought in. You know, I guess you can, once you get a big result like that on the road, on that kind of, you know, stage, what did that do for everyone post after that game to kind of buy into what Kirby was selling? You know, it just says, you know, if we if we do this a certain way, this is what the results are going to be. Kirby said some of the schemes are similar between this Notre Dame team and the one you played a couple of years ago. What do you see in there that's similar, but also Ian Book providing some new challenges for you guys? How do you prepare for him? You know, Ian Book, he's a great quarterback. You know, really, really shows up on film that he loves to extend his plays. You know, he can run the ball really well. It reminds me a lot of Johnny Manziel, and we're going to have to watch out for him and be able to contain him. What's the biggest problem trying to stop a guy like that? Well, he, it's a runner, so you got everything covered, and then next thing you know, he squirts out and runs for 20 yards because everyone's back's turned. So we got to be able to, con, you know, contain him, 
prevent him from extending the plays and making big plays. Do you spy him? I don't know. Would you? I mean, if you were the coach. Personally, if I was playing Madden, I might spy him. Okay. <laughs> um, what's the biggest difference you've noticed between Tyson Campbell last year and Tyson Campbell this year? He's got his confidence back. You know, th this Tyson here, Campbell, you know, I told him just work on being your confidence back. You know, next play mentality. Don't worry about what happens before. And so what you saw out there on Saturday was a guy that had his full confidence back. One thing I learned when I first got here is you got to be physical to play here and in this Georgia defense, and you got to be smart. So one of the things I did, you know, over the years is I became more knowledgeable about the game. You know, not only my assignment, but other people's assignments. I became more knowledgeable about what my opponent's doing, too. And so that's been the biggest thing, the biggest jump I've made. Do you pay much attention? Obviously, I think you're getting now more, a little attention on the national stage and people kind of looking at you as one of the top players in the country. And guys, and, you know, maybe an all American kind of guy. Do you, do you pay much attention to that, or does it leave, it must be a good feeling to think like at least people are sort of putting you in that category? Yeah, it's always a good feeling, but, you know, I don't pay attention to anything like that, man. Three years ago, I was a zero, so, you know, <laughs> I don't really pay attention to anything like that. What kind of problems uh, does their offense cause for you? Uh, the quarterback, you know, he, he keeps plays alive. He can extend plays. That's one of the things that we got to work, watch out for. You know, he runs for touchdowns. I saw him against the Louisville game. You know, he did a great job against those guys. And how about their receivers? Big receivers, really big receivers. They almost look like tight ends, but the receivers, and they got big structure and they're fast. Jerry, you were you were practicing against Jay um, before got his first start after he got his first start. But how much has he changed since you guys changed with Notre Dame, you know, a couple years ago and, and until now? He's became a lot smarter. You know, that's kind of hard to say because he's already really smart. He became a lot smarter and he's more confident in his checks and his plays that he wants to call. And he has a lot more confidence in himself. What's your message to the younger teammates to handle all the hype and anticipation? Well, just don't believe the hype, and you know, this is just another game. Nameless and faceless opponents, and we just got to go out there and do our job. Um, JR, so with um, our club, I mean, what were you able to see that kind of cemented his, uh, cemented his, uh, plays that you got? What did you see kind of? Well, when Mark first came over, he was very physical. And so that was one of the things I noticed from him. And I knew that he could play the star position if he continued to be physical. And he's really good in man coverage. So that's one of the things I always watch from Mark. Jared, we all, it's alternate history you don't want to go through. But if Davin doesn't make that sack, they go down, Notre Dame does two years ago, and wins the game. And Terry doesn't make that catch. Y'all don't get out of there with a win, but it's a close game. Does your season end up? any differently, I think, or did that win in that game propel you guys? Well, I think that was a key win for us, you know, that year. You know, we had to win that game, and that loss was a key loss for them. And I think that win pushed us to the playoffs. What was the thing that, stuck, that sticks in your mind the most, and your, the memory that sticks in your mind the most from, from most of that game? Just the fans, you know, the way the fans traveled to that game. When I walked out there, I was really expecting to see a lot of Notre Dame fans, but I saw a sea of red, and that was one of the most of the things that stuck out to me. In addition to the fans traveling, what was that whole atmosphere like for you? You were two years younger, and I mean, was it difficult not to be overwhelmed? No, I just always preach myself, you know, I'm, I'm built for this. This is something, you know, you dreamed about as a kid. You're built for this, you're ready for this, so don't worry about all the hype and don't worry about the outside noise. Yeah. Also, people forget that Notre Dame was coming off 4-8. and eight. Like, But did you guys come out of that saying, that's a good team we beat, and we and it validated you all a little bit? You know, they're a good team now. That was a good team we beat back then. You know, they, they went on, and they were in the talk for the playoffs for a long time. So definitely, this is a good team that we beat. What do you want to see from the fans this Saturday? Uh, everyone show up, show out, have fun. Uh, I don't know if, if it's a blackout, we're black. Everyone get together, do the same thing. Uh, if it's a red out, we're red. I don't know. <laughs> what do you want? I want whatever the fans want. Good. Very good. Coach was talking about your work ethic today and, and said that's the thing he noticed right away. You were sitting out. 
Where does that, I mean, everybody here is a hard worker, but, you know, when you get sort of noticed for that, even though maybe a step above, where do you, where'd that come from from you? Just my family, you know, my mom, my dad, they instilled that in, in my sister when we were younger. And just to work hard no matter what you do, you always got to go out there and compete and work hard. And that's where I found the love and passion for just sports. You know, no matter what it is, I can be playing checkers around the house with my family and we're, we're, everyone's going to compete. And everyone's going to work hard at that. We can be playing Connect Four and we're going to compete at that. So it doesn't matter how big or how small the game is, we're going to compete. And no matter what it is, we can be doing a, a spelling bee. We're all going to study that night before and try to win. How cool in 2017, you guys were playing the game and you come to the locker room and you brought an outside city for a scholarship. How cool was that for you as a team? Well, it was just amazing to add on top of the win. You know, it's a good feeling just to see anyone, and especially like Rod, you know, someone that works hard to get that scholarship. Great feeling. You talk about competitive family. When you were a kid, did they ever let you win? Uh, no, my dad is a known do anything to win type of guy. So, you know, he will cheat. He will switch up the cards if you're not looking to win. And my mom is actually really good. She actually wins most of the time because she's just very steady, quiet, and then somehow wins at the end. Do, do names like George Gifford, the Four Horsemen, does that mean anything to you? you know what that what they were? No, I'm, you got to tell me. Oh, well, these are Miller game traditions. Okay, uh, no, I, I don't know. know. I, don't know. <laughs> I didn't know if you were in the history of uh, <laughs> Rudy. Rudy. Huh? Did you ever watch Rudy? Yes, I've watched Rudy. Uh, great movie. <laughs> <laughs> What's the offside zone? I don't know. I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> you said your mom takes a steady, quiet approach. So leading into this week, obviously, there's a lot of noise. You've been through it before with big games. What are you telling the younger guys to kind of stay within themselves and ignore that noise? I just, you know, one, let them know it, it is a big game, but it's just another game. You know, we don't want you don't want to, you know, simplify it too much to where they just don't go out there. But you just got to let them know, you know, it's just another game in their head. You know, tell them next game, next opponent. Names of faces opponents, and then, you know, this is what they live for. They're built for this. Jared, do you feel the vibe like from your fellow students, you know, or just fans that you might run across about this game? I know you guys have been in the bubble here uh, with your game prep, but, uh, you know, what's it like to kind of be prepared for this one, knowing that folks outside are going crazy and getting ready for it? The vibe around campus is it's test week, so that, that's the vibe I've been getting. Everyone's been telling me that they're worried about the test, then the game. So, But I think everyone's going to show up, and they're going to show out, and I expect the fans to be out there big for us. Isn't one of the possible the changes around the team is you all played in so many big games since that Notre Dame game that this one will like, get you guys involved or like, anything like that? I think we played in like five four or five top five games back to back last year. So when we played the SEC championship game, so we, we're used to games like this, you know. This is what you come to Georgia for. You're built for games like that. That's what I preach to my guys. You know, you're built for this. This is why you came here. So, you know, you got to let them know this is just another game. Go out there, have fun. For early in 2017, that was kind of like a new phenomenon, having that, such a big game. So was it almost like, maybe not a shock, but like, was it like kind of a very, like a launch pad? Like, because this is the first big game. You know? like, Did we play Mississippi State before them? I think it was the second game. After? Yeah. Yeah, you know, it, it's a big game. I mean, last year, I mean, what was it, 2017? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a pretty big game, you know. Um, like I said, it kind of launched us into where the playoffs and kicked off our season.